So, uh, we have now completed the discussion regarding a pathology involving the deep veins of the lower limb, which is the deep vein thrombosis. The most common pathology which affects the superficial veins of the lower limb is varicose vein. So, varicose veins are basically permanently elongated, dilated veins with tortuosity and abnormal circulation. So, you find that in these veins, there is valvular insufficiency. So, as a result, the unidirectional flow of blood from below upwards is not being maintained and there is reversal of flow from above down. So, common risk factors for development of varicose veins, it can be hereditary, age related as older the age group, more is the chance of developing varicose veins. Females are at increased risk of developing varicose veins. Occupation, any occupation which involves prolonged durations of standing, for example, like traffic policemen, certain doctors, etc., have a very high rate of developing or chance of developing varicose veins. And also any factor which increases the intra-abdominal pressure. So, when you have a rise in intra-abdominal pressure, you find that the venous return decreases because the pressure difference between the thorax and the abdomen varies, abdomen and the lower limb vessels again. The pressure gradient is what draws the blood up. So, when you have a raised intra-abdominal pressure, the, uh, the uh, suction or the flow of blood from the lower limb into the abdomen decreases. So, as a result, more and more blood tends to stays within the superficial veins of the lower limb, causing varicose veins. Pregnancy, again, can cause varicose veins. Raised progesterone levels, again, is known to cause varicose veins. So, it has a prevalence of almost 35 percent and in 8 percent cases, you can have chronic venous insufficiency associated with it and in 2 percent cases, ulcers or venous ulcers as they are called are seen. So, there are different classification systems for varicose veins. So, the first classification system is based on which combination or which vein is main, mainly affected. For example, you can have a long saphenous vein varicosity which involves obviously the name suggests the long saphenous vein. You can have a short saphenous vein varicosity involving the short saphenous system. You can have varicose vein due to perforator incompetence. I have already mentioned about the perforators, named perforators at least. So, based on the venous system, superficial venous system involved, you can have varicose vein being classified into long saphenous vein varicosity, short saphenous vein varicosity and varicosity or varicose veins involving the perforate due to perforator incompetence. The second classification system is based on the dimension of the veins involved. For example, you can have thread veins wherein the veins are about 0.5 to 1 millimeter in size. So, these are extremely small varices which are seen around the ankle and they represent small dilated uh, pinkish bluish vessels. So, hence it has another name to it which is venulectasia. Like how you have telangiectasia, you have venulectasia here. The second type is reticular veins wherein the veins are slightly bigger, it is around 1 to 3 millimeters in size and they are usually seen within the subcutaneous of the subdermal plane. Varicose veins, when you have more than 3 millimeter size veins, we call it as varicose veins and they are dilated, tortuous, elongated superficial veins. When it is more than 4 millimeters, you find it to be large varicose veins and when it is less than 4 millimeters, we call it small varicose veins. And the fourth type is that you can have a combination of any of the above. It is very important that we understand this particular terminology called Safina Varix. So, Safina Varix is basically a varicosity involving the saphenofemoral junction. So, saphenofemoral junction just to reintrate is located about 3.5 centimeters below and lateral to the pubic tubercle. So, when you have a varicosity involving the saphenofemoral junction, you find it this if uh, it uh, manifests itself as a swelling in the saphenofemoral junction, which is apparent only when the patient is standing. Once the patient lies down, the swelling disappears. And there is a classical cough impulse over that uh, swelling as well as a palpable thrill. Now, sometimes varicosities can have pulsatility associated with it, especially in a syndrome called klippel trenoni syndrome. Varicosities can involve multiple areas other than the lower limb. It can involve the vulva, the perineum, the papniform plexus, etc. 
So, the next classification system is one which is used extensively all over the world, particularly by the vascular surgeons. It is the CEAP classification system. So, CEAP classification system is being regularly updated. The recent revision of this classification system was done in 2020. So, it has four important components to it as indicated by the terminology CEAP. So, in that C stands for clinical manifestation. E stands for etiology, A stands for anatomical distribution, T stands for pathophysiology. So, all these criteria you have four important components and the disease process or the venous disease itself is categorized in each according to each of these uh, criteria. For example, based on the clinical manifestation, the venous diseases of the lower limb is categorized as C0 wherein there is no visible or palpable sign of venous disease, C1 which is telangiectasia or reticular veins, C2 is varicose vein, C2R is recurrent varicose vein, C3 is edema, presence of edema, C4 changes in the skin, subcutaneous tissue, secondary to chronic venous disease, C4A is pigmentation or eczema, C4B is lipodermatosclerosis or atrophy blanche. C4C is corona phlebectatica. C5 is healed ulcer. C6 is active venous ulcer. C6R is recurrent active venous ulcer. So, based on the, the difference between the previous classification system, the same CEAP classification system and the present classification system is the addition of two important components or addition of two important uh, categories. One is this category called Corona Phlebectatica and this category called Recurrent Active Venous Ulcer. So, these two have been added according to the present revision done in 2020.